Greetings mech warriors, this is Blackhawk SC. Recently I've been making some guides on underused mechs, but I also want to spend some time on top tier mechs in the game today. So today we're going to visit the Banshee 3M. Since its introduction, the Banshee 3M has always been a very solid mech due to its high, energy, high engine cap and its ability to bow energy weapons, and five of those energy weapons are mounted high up. The traditional build that we saw a lot was the 5 medium and 3 large pulse with something like a standard 350 to 360 engine. However, over the past couple of months, I've been seeing many of the top tier players in the game run a 5 LPL build with an XL engine, such as the one I've built here. So initially, I wasn't sure whether this build will work out better because the Banshees didn't get any additional structure quirks, which makes a side torso destruction more likely. So the first adjustment that I had to make mentally was that I have to be slightly less aggressive than when I'm using the standard engine version. So this helps to mitigate the XL engine issue to a, to a slight degree. When we're poking, we're also able to minimize the exposed area to just the upper torso, unlike the, the other build. You also have superior range and slightly higher speed and agility. But after five games in this build, I was pretty convinced that this build is the go-to build for the 3M. Now I'm going to show you two gameplay videos, which are just the second and third matches I played with this build. The reason why I chose to show two videos is that they demonstrate two different aspects of the build. The first game lasted just under five minutes, and the first minute was just our team walking towards the other team. So the results you see is a good demo of how much damage the five LPLs can put out in just under four minutes of fighting. The second game was tougher, as we had an enemy that's grouped up pretty well. The terrain on Grimplex has really forced me to poke carefully using those high mounts, since flanks towards the side were pretty risky up till near the end of the match. It shows that under these stalemate kind of conditions, how this build can chip away at the enemy team bit by bit until we have a big enough advantage. So let's just jump right in. So this is the new Alpine Peak Skirmish spawn point. Um, if I was spawning on the other side, I'd probably want to go up the hill, the same I-9, I-10 hill that uh, people have been usually uh, been going towards. Um, I don't. I think PGI kind of made a mistake uh, when they reset Enemy the spawn points. Trade, trade but uh, people are still kind of like learning the map right now, and so like they. Sometimes I think they don't realize the advantage um, that the hill gives to them from that spawn point. So they're kind of like coming towards us right now. Um, which is what we want, actually, because this is actually the worst spawn point. <laughs> Uh, since we're under, since we're our range is like 400 something, that we w we want to stay undercover um, as we're making that approach, and we're getting radar de deprivation chirps, so we know something was close Arctic by, wild. and there's an Arctic cheetah. So if you equip radar deprivation, just make sure you uh, you listen for to those chirps. Now for the Arctic cheetah, I'm I'm trying to aim for the legs, but um, it's changing elevation sometimes, so. I'm Having a little bit of difficulty getting uh, getting clean shots on legs. New target acquired. But in general, those large pulse lasers do do a lot of work on lights legs. Okay, so you can just see what happened over there. Like I took aim at CT, um, and he's. Like I, I take uh, one of the things with pulse lasers, you know, take the time to aim and shoot CT. If not CT, then side torso. Because you want to concentrate that, those 55 points of damage, um, as much as possible. And here we see the LPLs work their magic on lights legs. Make sure you watch your heat. Um, New target acquired. It's about 
So five LPLs seem to increase seem to increase my heat by about forty percent. Again, that's what I mean by playing a little bit uh, less aggressively than maybe the uh, the other build. Um, as you saw, we're able to avoid focused, avoid getting focused on. We are taking we are taking shots. We're being uh, we're being somewhat aggressive, but you know, just a little, maybe a little bit less. And it was kind of a nice thing that the enemy shot my legs during this whole time. Heat level critical. Target destroyed. New target acquired. Well, the game is pretty much determined at this point. Now it's just clean up. I can make those shots count. Just in case. Target acquired. Target destroyed. So we did eleven hundred damage in just under four minutes. And this match on Grim Plexus uh, is the very next match. Uh, so for the first couple of minutes, we're just maneuvering to position, um, and we're just, the teams, two teams, are just kind of getting closer to each other. This is a little bit longer match because it was kind of a fairly stalemate position where both teams kind of took, uh, you know, cover, and it's really going to be up to. Um, our guys to get get in decent pokes uh, and whittle down whittle down the enemy yeah, little by little. Come to us. And that's a job that I think the Banshee is really quite good at um, due to its high mounts. So we see the this LRM fire coming from about I don't know something like 800 away. 600 away or so or so and when we were doing that peak we saw a little a mech over yeah, about well, 800 away be so, handy. so we saw the mech uh, at 800 we couldn't reach him and it was just better to to duck back down in that case So 400, we're, we're going to take a chance at a peak, um, but it was under cover um, by the time we saw it and took a little bit of fire here. Got one target in Ultra 6. New target acquired. Again, we're able to maintain that um, to position there and just use the... Again, we were able to like kind of duck under that hill and use uh, the terrain as cover, just just utilizing that uh, those high mounts. Um, no need to expose like your entire mech, you know, over acquired. that uh, over that ridge. New target acquired. 
So somebody call the left flank. Yeah, they're pushing left flank now. Level so we do see some, we do see some activity there. New target acquired. Again, not trying to be the center of attention. See a bunch on seismic there, so we drop a drop an airstrike across the ridge. Target acquired. New target acquired. Got some decent hits there. So still a lot of seismic uh, behind the little building and over right across the ridge. So I'm going to take a chance and do a little bit of peek, target but acquired. that corner was being covered by the Hellbringer. But I think that Hellbringer lost a trade. Um, 55 versus probably 40 something. Yeah, I mean, even if you didn't make an ideal poke, sometimes, um, a lot of times you just, you'll still win trades uh, with this build. So CT on the Muller is what we want to aim for. Yeah, the, that Black Knight committed too much. He should have stayed in, went in the corner. I don't know why he. I don't know why he decided to poke out so far. So three three, where it's a pretty close game. Um, again, you're just trying to attrition down that, trying to attrition down the enemy um, with their large pulses. And with that shadow catch shot, you can see how helpful those um, those high mounts are again. And it just keeps coming back and back, coming back and back again, like uh, just those. High mounted weapons are just so useful. And if we're running that uh, the medium laser build, um, we would not be able to get our full alpha off. Target acquired. New target. They're pushing out behind us. Echo seven. Warning incoming missile. Heat level critical. I'm just waiting to cool down actually before I poke that corner. Um, and also, if I poke that corner, like I wouldn't be able to back off and get into cover so oh, quickly. That's why. That's why I'm backing up under uh, using this terrain here um, to shield me. See, it's much easier to to get back under cover by reversing than to actually. Um, then if I had to get back on, uh, get back behind the building. So orange CT have to be quite careful here and not commit too hard. I do see the UV, but I want to take out the mech first. I had better shots on the mech than. Target acquired. That was probably the better target. Better the target. And this Hellbringer came out of nowhere. And protect torso. Protect the torso. I don't want to die. Target destroyed. 
Um, saved by my team. And skipping forward just a little bit uh, towards the end here. Target destroyed. And we chased this last, I think it was a kit fox or a raven or something. Chased him around for a couple minutes, so cut to the end screen here. And 1k damage on the very next game. Just a very solid mech. Okay, so this is a look at the Banshee 3M, specifically the 5 LPL build. And I think this is one of the top mechs in the game today for the solo queue. Also, if you're wondering about the two small lasers, make sure to put them on the torsos first so you can get the LPLs mounted high up. This is a thing that I think PGI should fix, where the weapons go where you want it to go, without having to use workarounds like that. So for more MW NWO guides and gameplay videos like this one, subscribe to my channel and check out the past videos from the channel as well. See you next time!